Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, or video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Travis Ritchie, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Okay. <laughs> I just had to think, hey, we know someone famous. Don't! <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Salty and Petty podcast. She's a little bit salty. He's a whole lot of petty, and together we're the Salty and Petty podcast. Duh. All right, kids, and to get you in the holiday spirit, this time we're going to cover it. Let's travel back in time with us to that magical year of 1989 and the first episode of The Simpsons, The Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire. Um, technically it's called The Simpsons Christmas Special according to the title card. Well, according to the Disney Plus and the internet and everywhere well, else. I, the mouse, first of all. Well, everywhere I've looked on the internet, too, it, it has that. It, I'm just saying. Technically... What, are you too good for the internet? Sometimes. Oh, hey-oh. Not when, it com- not when it comes to those um, adult features. Hey-oh. They're all on my hard drive now, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need this damn Skylink for nothing. And boy, are those links hard. <laughs> all right, anyway. So, yes. More like dense. Thank you, Elon Musk. Anyway. Oh! <laughs> Is your internet curved? So yes, this came out in 1989. So yes, as I was telling my 10 year old son uh, last night, I'm like, yes, I was 11 years old when this came out. <laughs> and I'm now middle aged, old, broken down old man, kids. God, this thing looked terrible. I know, I know. Even just by current Simpsons stuff uh, up here. Yeah, well, again, it, you know, one, it's 1989. They probably thought, oh, you know, we'll get uh, what maybe two or three seasons out of this, and you know. 35 years I mean, later, kids. I mean, this is like, um, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking, actually. Well, I just wonder, was the, the but I'm sure the budget wasn't there at this point. They were just like, oh, you know, all, you know. Yeah, it's like Waylon Smithers in the opening is still black. Like, it was so jarring. I have not watched early season Simpsons in a decade, okay? It was so it, 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 It's been years since I watched any Simpsons, so yeah, it's, yeah. Well, I watched the um, I watched the True Heart, the Tree House, True House of Horror, Horror specials yeah. every year without fail. It's just the thing we do. But like other than that, yeah, I don't really watch The Simpsons. Like it's just the definition of seasonal rot, and it's like every every time I see like an article, is this is this the new age of Simpsons getting better than like three episodes? Never mind, never mind. Every single freaking time. So, but yeah, like The Simpsons for a long time won't. Well, was my favorite show is what got me into adult animation it is the classic the standard the longest running american television show beat out Gunsmoke. like i think that happened even seven six seven years ago oh yeah maybe even 10 years ago at this point i don't know <laughs> but it's just it's just come such a long way and it's just so jarring i'm just like oh yeah they got santa's helper in the first episode mm-hmm. yep <laughs> It's crazy. I um, know. I and I remember like back then, like you know, people talking about how like edgy this is, and now it's like you compare it to like you know South Park or something, and it's like nah, you know, compared to South Park, it's like yeah. Well, this is... it was edgy for the '90s because oh, it yeah. was subverting expectations of even that, which was you know, Roseanne had already basically done it with the whole father knows best and that whole. Yeah. subversion of the sit- family sitcom trope and everything but this takes it further because he's choking his kid he's an alcoholic he's just like outright not trying to be a good dad and it's a cartoon <laughs> people don't expect this from a cartoon at this point yeah well i be until your father gets home but yeah like i mean we could get into it but yeah i for the masses that aren't like you know niche people yeah i guess so yeah yeah but like if you watch the tracy allman show yes um do you kind of do what's oh yeah, this the oh yeah, th- that's the thing. Yeah, this started as like uh, shorts a on the Tracy short, Allman yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember watching those. That that's old I am, and you know, just talking about it with people, and uh, just 
like at that point, I don't even remember the names of the characters. I'm like, yeah, the son's choking the father, you know, the father's choking the son and stuff. And, you know. Yeah. And it's just like, I started thinking about like how many of the cast members have like passed away. You know, Miss, the actress that played Mrs. Krabappel, the actress that played Ned Flanders' wife, um, like like a lot of them, <laughs> like a lot of them were gone, and the show's just marching forward. And it's just like I feel like the the best years are definitely behind them. I don't agree with the golden era of Simpsons, like at all, like because I, I I think I was just too young. Like I just you know when people say it was like the golden era, I was like, eh, no. <laughs> I think your golden era just is specifically like how old you were when you started watching it and when you stopped watching it, basically. Yeah, but I mean, in the early season, you had like people like Conan O'Brien writing for the show and stuff. Didn't and he only like write one episode and it's the Dale Monterell episode or something like that? I don't know if it's just one. I don't know if it's just one. I'd have but... to look it up, but I feel like he only wrote a couple. It's not like he was like yeah. a staff writer or something. I, I know. The Monterell episode stands out as like one of those episodes that aren't typical. So that's what makes me think. Like, I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, I don't know so. if that's just the one everyone points out, but that might just be his big, the biggest one he worked on, or, you know. Yeah, and it's, the, here's the thing about, well, like, I can't even say this about The Simpsons, but, like, The Simpsons had, like, an overly educated, it, it's, a lot of them went over to Futurama, and they are definitely the most overly educated, like, writer's room in the world. And so, like, yeah, I, I totally get why people had to move on, and, like, there was, like, always fighting, and, <laughs> like, I don't know how this got aired like this is the first episode you're gonna put on this is like kind of depressing why well, i i don't know if they were just like oh yeah you get the uh december so they're like oh we'll do a christmas i know but and again tip it wasn't even supposed to be the first episode the first episode they were having like animation issues with and so uh, they had to put this, this was, the one, was the one that was ready to go and they're like Ooh. <laughs> I mean, most of the episodes kind of depressing, but I mean, you kind of get a happy ending at the end. But it's yeah, it's just yeah, it's, it's not your typical Christmas uh, episode. No, like they're at the racetrack. The horse, yeah, the dog the track. The dog yeah. track, like not even the horse track. Like it's the dog track, and it's like you know, shout out to the horses. I love y'all too, but like it is just something. I just, I dog tracks are just so sad. <laughs> what all the drunks like Barney there? <laughs> Yeah, like, I've been to one in real life, and I was just like, no, it really is like that. Yeah, oh, oh, my God. oh yeah. I don't love I that. Mean, like, you're not, you can't even afford to gamble on horses, you're gambling on dogs. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. I love the kid and his dad there, as they walk past, he's like, yeah, can we open presents? He's like, remember, not till the eighth race. I'm like, oh, jeez. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. I feel like that hit home for some older people. That definitely wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was for somebody. Oh, there's somebody that was like, ooh, wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's just kind of get into it. Um, it's like, so we start the uh, episode with them at the uh, Springfield Elementary School Christmas pageant. And then um, we're kind of like moving around, watching everybody get ready for, you know, Christmas. And Bart and Lisa are, are writing letters to Santa. Lisa asked for a pony. And Mar's like, ah! Santa's she, sleigh. She, she goes, you've asked for this for three years. Haven't you cut the hint? <laughs> and Bart wants a tattoo, and you know, the more you forbid a kid, the more they want to do it. Uh, Freaking Bart, my least favorite character. Always has been, always will be. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Maggie is my favorite Simpsons character. Oh, I, like would not, I would not elaborate, and I would not be taking questions. <laughs> Just the subtle, that's what I was thinking about. Like, Maggie is, like, the fun, like the funniest part of a lot of episodes, like this one. And, like, just the subtle comedy of, you know, her walking around in that star costume and just, like, falling on her face and stuff. Or just, like, I just wish I still had a pacifier so I could punctuate every point with a pacifier. Just, like, she does. Like, it just, like, either, either you know or you don't. But, like, mm. yeah, Maggie is the best. Um, oh, but the pageant, I mean, the, let's not gloss over, it gave it gave the world and you one of your favorite songs. Yes, of course. Oh, Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, it probably Ray's favorite song. <laughs> Ray's favorite song, it's his ringtone. I just Batman, know it. Batman, my favorite character. <laughs> like, he's just, like, instead of me, like, when you say, uh, you know, talking about Peter, so now, like, Parker, he's just, like, least. <laughs> least the little the little uh pointy up sign least favorite character <laughs> no 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 finn it's jingle bells batman smells no no <laughs> yeah that that was just 
it's so classic. Like they just really knew what this family was gonna be for like the next at least the next seven seasons. It really don't stray too far from this whole setup. Oh yeah. But yeah, they're shopping and Bart goes and gets the tattoo mother on his arm. And it's just like, babes, didn't she forbid you from that? <laughs> and then, so before the tattoo gets finished, Mar- uh, Marge finds him and drags him to the dermatologist to have it removed. But of course, that spends all the Christmas money. Uh-huh. And then, uh, it's just like, oh, well, Homer's Christmas bonus will cover the gifts. Uh, well, damn evil Mr. Burns cancels that year's employee Christmas bonus. Uh-huh. So now Homer's got a moonlight as a freaking mall Santa. I think like one of the most depressing things ever. Uh, wow. Well, and, yeah. and, and of course the suggestion of Barney. Oh yeah. Oh, poor Barney. His oh my god, Barney's timeline is so damn tragic. <laughs> we'll definitely have to come back to some Simpsons episodes and stuff. Cause I mean, it'll be here. It was it was here, it, you know, it'll be here before after we're dead, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, I know. I'm just like, how long is this thing gonna be? I, I, I look at I always point to that damn show, um, Minority Report, the TV show where it was like set in, like 50 years into the future, and The Simpsons was still on. Like they had a commercial. It was like it was like season 57 of The Simpsons up next. <laughs> I mean, I'm always like, oh, you know, is this show gonna go as long as the uh, cast is alive? But with AI, I mean, this thing could go forever, right? Uh, pretty much. You know, I always suspected that they would age the character. Like, if, like, say the main cast died, they would probably, like, kill off Marge and Homer and, like, age the kids up to get new character voices. Like, Like, I just feel like that's the direction that we'll probably be headed because technically there was a point where they were gonna, in The Simpsons, um, and it was one of those, um, future episodes, if you know anything about, like, newer seasons it was supposed to be like the the series finale and people liked it so much and they kind of dipped back into that well so it's always like in the back of my mind like so if one of the parents die or you know character actors that voice their parents die they'll totally just age the kids up and do that into the future stuff that people kind of really want anyway so that that's kind of my theory of how they could actually keep it going even without AI. Because like I said, AI is contentious and it will always be contentious for voice actors and actors in general. And I, I said it when they started doing those mocaps. Nobody listens to Lilith. No, I was like, bro, what are you doing? Keep it in the video games. Don't bring it, don't bring it to cinema. You're asking for it. And then that avatar thing happened, and it's just like James Cameron, I see what you're doing. <laughs> And here we are. Just saying. It's, I saw it. I told y'all. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, it, well, I I think of stuff in, like, the terms of, pod, you know, through a podcast lens anymore. I'm like, <laughs> man, if you did a Simpsons podcast, you would have, like, a, you have, like, a lifetime uh Oh, yeah. Project. There are. There just, are. Just start. I mean, I know. just YouTube yeah. channels where it's just, yeah. like, you'll never run out of material. 35, 34. I know there's 34 seasons Like, you could Disney literally Plus. podcast every single day about The Simpsons if you wanted to. And still have, like, like for years. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, how many episodes of it are there? Oh, my God. How many episodes are there of The Simpsons right now? I mean, it has Let to be hundreds, see. doesn't it? Let me look. I'll look. Because, again, I mean, I know there's 34 seasons on Disney Plus right now. There's Well, and they're in their 35th season. And then there's shorts, films, uh, the, the movie, and um, some specials to include. Um, let me see. Are you not going to give me a number? You're going to make me count. Really? Oh no! Here, as of November nineteenth, yes, 20, there we go, twenty twenty-three, seven hundred and fifty-seven episodes. Yeah, seven hundred and fifty-seven. Because I was almost thinking, I'm like, oh, I should do a tat, you know, for my holiday or something. I should try to watch as many Simpsons as I can. <laughs> no, 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 no. You couldn't even binge watch Supernatural no, over the holiday. No, 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 <laughs> like, no. let alone the Simpsons. Yeah, this would be like a year or more project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, seven hundred. That, that's like you just being a burrito, like <laughs> just like I did. I remember one time. I, I like at one time it was manageable to binge watch Supernatural in a summer, but like literally, you would have to get home from work and do nothing else, like stay up until like two in the morning, and, and then like you know. So yeah, it, it was possible at the time. Now it's not. <laughs> oh wait, here we go. I, I, someone asked, "How long would it take to watch all the Simpsons?" Uh, I mean, but you have to think about it too. It's a cartoon, so it's only like twenty-two minutes long. Yeah, 
Oh, okay. When when there were 639 episodes, it came out to 234.3 hours, which was 9.76 days. Well, who can really actually sit through that? I know. And that's when there was 639. <laughs> There's 100 yeah. more okay, now. Okay, so it's like, it's, it, it'd probably be like two weeks at this point of just like... Straight nothing else, yes. Yeah, like, I couldn't imagine. I had to stop binging TV because like, just... I can only do it like two or three episodes, no matter how long the the episode is. If the episode's like, if, the, if we're talking like a, a, a quote unquote hour long drama, ain't no way. You get maybe two episodes out of me, and then I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. Like the I can't imagine. And there's other stuff, shorter <laughs> stuff I want to watch because I know I keep forgetting it, and Will keeps bringing it up. Uh, that Green Lantern animated series. Like, man, I want to go back oh, and watch yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Are you talking about the original one or the? But where the Green Lantern or which one? The no, no, the animated series, the 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 one that was on Cartoon Network. Oh, okay, yeah. You still haven't watched that? No, no, no. I did watch it. I just the rewatch. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say what? No, no. I want to rewatch it. Yeah. It's Kill Walk Show. Come on. Not exactly. <laughs> yeah, you <a> poser. <laughs> I was gonna say that doesn't seem right, but no one Phil. I don't know. No, I I did watch it, but it's been a while. I want to rewatch it. Just... Don't rewatch any of that. Um, but where the Batman? That was tragic i wonder i don't even the know. last good batman animated show um i'm not talking about harley quinn but i'd say it was brave and the bowl and even people shitting on brave and the bowl like they just didn't get it i was like you didn't obviously you don't read the comics you don't get it it's fine yeah well, well, it was so different than the other ones so made it great mm. it was it was time to like not make batman so serious yeah There's like a- god we were well that was like prime bat god time too so it was just like it was so refreshing to see that and then speaking and of, of course ted mcginley yes and speaking of Prime, aren't they working on one for Amazon Prime? What? A Batman animated, a new Batman animated series. Because it's not going to... I I heard that, but I, I thought, don't know. Yeah, because it, like, it's so weird. They sold it to Prime because it's like, why wouldn't you keep that for Max? That would be traffic. Well, I, I, technically it doesn't... Technically? <laughs> I don't think that they can use it for Max or something. I think they have to... I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> the, the rights for Batman is so effed up right I now. I know, dude. but it's like they have Harley Quinn, but they, you know, it's like Batman. Well, like, and they they don't really use Batman. They use Bruce Wayne. Like, it's like yeah. that whole, like, loophole, reach around thing. And plus, animated is fine. It's the live action stuff. But, like, Max is, like, in such shambles that I don't think they want to actually produce in-house. Because animation is expensive. So... I think that's what it comes down to. They're kind of doing the Sony method. Is like, yeah, I'll let you use the name. You just give me the money for it, basically. Yeah. I think it's worker. You said reach around. <laughs> I said what I said. Uh, there's, our, there's, our, there's, our, there's, there's our next lawsuit. Porn has damaged this young lady's mind. <laughs> no, I said what I said. If you know, you know. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, poor Homer's working as a depressing uh, mall Santa. And then on Christmas Eve, Bart just ruins it for everybody and pulls down his beard. And, you know, they have that heart to heart. Mm -hmm. And it's his fault. And then, like, he finds out how much (laughs) mall Santa pays. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a classic late stage capital. Oh, we got to take money for your training and your uniform. Yeah, so he walks out of there with 13 bucks. I mean, but eight, 1989, 13 bucks is still more than 2003's 13. Oh, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. you can't even get a damn Big Mac meal for $13 in most most big cities. I'm just saying. Uh-huh, yeah, I know. But I'm just, yeah, but you're getting... What the hell? But Bro, I tried to order McDonald's breakfast, uh, what was it, Tuesday? And I looked on the DoorDash, I was like, nope, we're driving there. Like for the for a single sandwich, it was like six dollars on DoorDash. Went there, it was like three seventy five. Oh yeah, no, no, no. yeah. I remember last time I went to McDonald's and got food. I was like, wait a minute. I remember when this was like the cheap alternative. What the hell? There's like literally not a dollar menu anymore anywhere. I think like when I knew we were in trouble is when Wendy's didn't have the four for four and they changed it to the biggie bag. I knew we were in trouble. <laughs> when fast food is yeah, when you're like, well, yeah. when you literally can go to Panera Bread or Applebee's for the same damn price. And I can get an alcohol and drink at Applebee's? Guess where I'm going? Sorry, Panera Bread. And the I'll, fi- I'll, listen, I love you, but <laughs> you don't have alcohol. I, I mean, mean, you do have those charged lemonades, though, and I have to stay away from caffeine, so. I mean, I mean, uh, fast food, are you, I mean, are, 
are we are we gonna about to see the end of fast food because it's like when you're yeah when you're priced the same as like a panera or something and you can get better like better panera and li- literally we were food. talking about this you can literally go to applebee's or chili's for the same for two people at mcdonald's or chili's you i mean come on chili's has got and who's got the better food mm, i wonder <laughs> well debatable well <laughs> depending on your taste palette like some like i i get the draw of mcdonald's like especially if you travel a lot like yeah. you're gonna go there it's pretty much the same thing well, yeah, I mean, you go here, you go to Tokyo, and it's probably going to be almost the same thing, but... Yeah, you get, you might get a McSushi roll, but you, you're still going to be able to get a Big Mac. Yeah, <laughs> Koala Burger, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ray, drop there, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I think, isn't it like, is it is it Jack in the Box down there? I forget. It, they don't really have a lot of McDonald's that have, like, Jack in the Box and something else. Oh. And Jack in the Box is basically actually Burger King down there, though, or something like that. I forget how they're. I mean, they still have a Kmart down there, so I, I just really, uh, yeah. it's hard to keep up with what they don't have. In Australia. <laughs> I I know at one point wasn't it like the last Kmart's were like in those far off lands of like Australia, and New Jersey. Yeah, uh, I think Kmart's restructured under a different company completely in Australia. So I don't I don't know how that works. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thirteen dollars. I just couldn't imagine. I know. Back in I my think, day. I used to, I used to get to more than that for babysitting. Like I just, a grown man giving a grown man thirteen dollars. Have you no shame, corporations? Have you no, no they shame? don't. <laughs> it was the eighties too. Trickle down, trickle down economics, Reaganomics. Yeah, poor guy. So they get that that tip about the Greyhound race and from Barney. Barney. It's like oh, Barney. I'm rooting for you, babes, but you're making it hard. <laughs> I know Bart was with Homer, but when we got this scene at Moe's Bar, I'm just like, oh, I'm waiting for a prank call. I'm waiting for a prank call. <laughs> Amanda hug and kiss? I pee freely. <laughs> I miss those gags. They don't do it anymore. It's really? so sad. Wow. Yeah, they they haven't done one of those. I think the last time they did it is like a gag where he's like, Bart, I know it's you. I think that was like season 20 or something oh, like that. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, again, well, again, in this age, it's just like, yeah, Bart, I know it's you, like a caller ID. <laughs> Hell, he probably doesn't even have a phone. It's his direct cell phone. <laughs> if you know anything about businesses in 2023, it, nobody has a business line. It's their direct cell phone. I'm just like, babes, not looking good. I don't trust people who don't have business lines. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm old school that way. Or worse yet, they don't have a number at all. And you got to go looking on their Instagram page. Not like I'm going to call any food trucks out or anything. Just oh, get my. Get your shit together. Oh get my. your shit together, entrepreneurs. <laughs> anyway, so they're at uh, Springfield's Down. Homer bets all his money on the last minute entry named Santa's Little Helper. A 99 to 1 long shot. Yeah, because. Homer, it, the, babes, yeah. your karma, your luck is poop. Like, stop playing with me. And again, well, when Barney was telling them, what was it, Whirlwind or something? Yeah, it was the, was the, was the pick and it's like babes if you see a sign like that that means go the opposite direction it's it's, it's actually a sign you're gonna lose your money yeah exactly but yeah but yeah because barney follows his pick and wins yeah yeah exactly and then like literally he comes in dead last oh yeah they're standing there Homer's like oh i just want to wait till he crosses the finish line they're just waiting there waiting there i guess i ah, forget it <laughs> <laughs> and then they go around back and um as they're leaving and they see the dog's owner yelling abandon him for losing the race and they usually get you know mm-hmm. <laughs> so at least, i mean that's that's the best outcome for that dog oh, and yeah. then bart's like oh let's keep the dog as a pet and i was like all right and then they get home and then they talk about the christmas bonus and then he's like but no look we got santa's little helper and then the family's happy yeah. they sing rudolph the red nose reindeer and it's just like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well when I, and of course sitting there waiting with uh marge's or sisters patty oh and god Selma. i hate patty and Selma. i hate them so much is marge <laughs> just yeah oh ch- poor homer like I, that's the only time i really feel bad is when patty and summer are around and grandpa's there <laughs> poor senile grandpa yeah it's it's depressing <laughs> to me i'm sorry I love dogs, but I would never want a dog as a ho- like a holiday or a birthday present. Like I just, it's yeah, like no. it's like getting your wife a vacuum cleaner or a dishwasher unless she explicitly oh asks you for it. Do not get that for a birthday or holiday gift or an anniversary. Don't do it unless she specifically explicitly asks you. 
Life pro tip. Yes, don't get anyone a yes a a practical gift unless they ask for it, kids. Same thing with pets because you, you got to clean it, you got to feed it. It's 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 a it's like a, at least a if at least well for a dog at least a ten year commitment. Yes, and again, again, they're gonna be a member of your family, kids. Don't act like they're just like some fun little toy, you know. Yeah, like it's so sad when I see like one and a half year old dogs on like Craigslist because oh they're not a puppy anymore they're not cute anymore it, it pisses me off or the family's moving or something yeah oh they always oh we're moving and we just can't well you should look for another house shouldn't you have? how about you get rid of one of, get rid of one of your kids same difference as far as I'm concerned yeah pretty much family member's a family member and that's why I don't have five dogs <laughs> that's why you do have five dogs that's why I don't only have four I've been wanting a corgi so bad. I just, I just, I don't, I mean, my dogs are old dogs for the most part. My youngest dog is like seven. Oh, man. Yeah. So I want to, I like, I have puppy fever. I really do. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just going to wait for one of them to die. How old's the little a-hole? Was he the seven-year-old? No, no, no. That's my pit bull. Oh. Uh, the little one's like almost 10. Oh, jeez. No, wait. Eight. He's eight. So he's like, so he's almost gonna be old man a hole. Okay. He's a, well, he's a little dog, so he's already old. Yeah. He's got the old man. He's been. A, he literally has had his old man grumpy face since he was like seven months old. It pissed me <laughs> off so bad. Like he literally came out of the puppy face so fast. I did, like. I didn't. Pick, and the thing about it is, like, I love him. I love all my dogs, but I didn't actually pick him. He's actually not my dog. He's my ex's dog. Oh. He didn't know what kind of dog he was getting. I'm like, bro, you didn't even Google this dog. You just grabbed him. Like, what the fuck? It's a rat terrier. Like, oh. I know what that dog. Oh, like, like yeah. he didn't get it. I was like, he's like, why'd you name this dog Snoopy? And I'm like, obviously, you've never Googled what rat terriers are. So it's a little dog, a little gappy, annoying dog that likes to hunt shit. So it's just like, uh-huh. he he's just an asshole. He gets into everything. He's in everybody's business. He tries to tell everybody what to do. I, I love him, but like... He he literally came out of the puppy face so fast. I just was so mad. I was like, "You didn't even stay cute long enough for me to actually like bond with you and love you like I like like all the other dogs. Like I love him, but he was just he was a troublesome puppy, just troublesome. Hmm. Short. Ha- I, I didn't I didn't really have a chance to raise him because I I was I I work daytime. Wow. Whereas the other my oldest dog, I literally didn't work at all when the first like year of his life. So it was just me and him, and he's just so well behaved. My pit bull, same thing. I had a chance to like raise him. The little one that I didn't raise, he's a total asshole. He's the one you always hear broken. <laughs> hmm, little has an attitude. Hmm, does that remind me of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a he was a latchkey dog. Yeah, like I said, my ex raised him. Like, yeah, spent the most time with him, and he kept him in a cage. And like that's just not how I raise dogs. Like I've never raised dogs like that. So that's how mostly because little- I had pit bulls. You have to really love a pit bull so they don't turn out like little thugs well uh, <laughs> is like that like you don't keep dogs in cages boyfriends yes dogs exactly no. <laughs> exactly dogs are free range they roam <laughs> anyway but yeah like uh, like also greyhounds are just so sad mm. like i just could never have a greyhound unless it was a rescue greyhound they're just like so sad look they have the sad boy eyes uh, oh, and then the little Italian greyhounds. Oh, even worse, even worse. Sad, the sad boy eyes well, on a thousand. Like I can't. I well, don't like dogs with sad boy eyes. It makes well, that, me sad. Well, that's what they even said at the uh, track. You know, Homer's like, "Oh, that scrawny thing," and Bart's like, "They're all scrawny." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah, just like all my dogs, with the exception of the little asshole who's a purebred. Who ever, who buys a purebred rat terrier? Uh, I know at least one asshole who did. But, like, I just, I don't like purebred dogs. Like, I don't. Like, all my other dogs yeah. are literally rescue dogs. Um, My oldest dog, he came from the pound. My pit bull, I rescued him off of Craigslist. Uh, my husky, I also rescued her off of Craigslist. So. Well, purebred, like, purebred's a scam, too, because pe- people charge, like, a insane amount of money for him, too. Well, we have papers for him and stuff like that, yeah. but. Oh well, yeah, he, uh, technically he was a thousand dollars, but we talked him down to like seven fifty or something. Oh, like I've heard, that. I've heard a purebred's going for. Well, I guess it depends on the. Well, breed, it depends but more on what than it that, is. more than that, and more than that thousand. Yeah, for like French bull, like for French bulldogs, which I don't really agree with because they can't actually push the baby out themselves. You have to take them to the vet and induce labor and give them a C section because 
selective breeding has made yeah. them unable to actually have natural birth. Those kind of dogs, I'm just like, Ooh. like that- I get why they're so expensive, but at the same time, they shouldn't actually exist. Well, yeah, and don't they have trouble breathing and stuff too? Sometimes? Well, yeah, almost like even pitbulls have any any dog with the brachiophallic head shape that gives them like the the juvenile like forever puppy face and stuff like that. Yeah, they all have that that issue, breathing issue. Basically, see, like almost any of those dogs snore. Bulldogs, pit bulls, French bulldogs, all those kind of dogs. They all uh, Boston Terriers are the worst. Pugs are the worst. So yeah, so I mean that's the thing. I mean all this selective breeding. It's like you know some of these dogs you shouldn't have bred them because now you know. Yeah, it's it's like pigeons. You know we they, they why they don't know how to make nests is because they you know humans we used them and abused them and left them for dead. <laughs> they, they just don't. They're domesticated, but we're like ew pigeons. It's like we domesticated them. We made them dependent on us. Love the pigeons, which is why you gotta love Mike Tyson. Just saying, he loves pigeons. He took care of pigeons for a really long time. Pigeons are just doves. I'm just, I'm, I'm, pigeons are just urban doves. Love your pigeons. Exactly. Or eat them. Who cares? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> if you're hungry. <laughs> tastes like chicken. <laughs> Hell, chicken doesn't even taste like chicken now. But that's another rant for another day. <laughs> Sorry, no. Didn't mean to get you excited. Uh... But yeah, all in all, I'll, I'll give it a solid gentleman's B as in boy, as in Bart plus. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I not think... the best, not the worst. A little heartwarming, a little depressing. Classic Simpsons. Yeah. And again, I mean, uh, just, just remember when this was new, it's like you didn't know what was coming next. So yeah, this is like, I, man, it's just, it's so bad. Like, And it's intentional. Like I'm not, this is no shade to the anime. This is very intentional art style. But like, just looking back compared to like new simpsons it is crazy it, like you like how the frick did this show last 35 years i know because like I, I i was watching this i'm like i remember as a kid thinking this was hilarious i'm like what was so funny about this our frontal lobe developed babes true, it's okay true it's okay well, well then later <laughs> well, on also it's all we had right oh like, yeah yeah cause... people don't understand like back then we only had four stations if you didn't have cable exactly. and you were lucky to get fox lucky <laughs> and again, this was the first. I mean, we didn't have any South Park or Family Guy. You know, this was it. Yeah. Well, we had the fun zones before this, but it was a lot more functional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> always give Simpsons, uh, always give fun zones their flowers. Always. <laughs> and again, I know they only had, what, like 22 minutes, but I was just like, when Mr. Burns comes on the intercom, I'm like, man, I want some Mr. Burns scenes. <laughs> Excellent. Evil, evil Mr. Burns. I know that's what uh, Conan O'Brien says. Like his favorites, like Mr. Burns, he loves writing the evil guy. So, like you know, Conan never went back to write Simpson, more Simpsons. It would be like a lot of Mr. Burns stuff. We haven't had a good Mr. Burns story in like a decade. So, <laughs> Team Coco, <laughs> come on, Conan, rescue! Should we start a petition for for Conan to come back to Simpsons and write an episode? What I mean, what... he comes back. What the hell happened to my monorail? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I mean, after 35 years, I mean, don't you need, like, gimmicks to keep stuff fresh? Like, oh, hey, you know, after how many decades Conan O'Brien's coming back to write an episode, you know? I think that will pull people back in yeah. for an episode. But you need something, like, yeah, the, the Simpsons definitely have their gimmicks and stuff. Like, the couch gag is a gimmick. Like, it's gotten more epic over time. And I, I literally remember the very last episode that stopped me from watching Weekly, and it was the couch gag. It's the one with the Kesha song, and I was just like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Nope, I've aged out of The Simpsons. Like I said, it's Goodbye. been a, it's been a while since I watched any new episodes. So it's I, I know they've done flash forwards before, but I mean, no one's aged no, up the yet. Flash forward episodes are really good. Yeah, but no one's aged up, right? In the regular no, episodes, no, 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 no. parts still I mean, fourth grade. Bart and Lisa have turned the same age a couple of times. Maggie has turned the same age a couple of times at this point. Marge and uh, uh, Homer's like how they met story has been done at least five times. <laughs> well, yeah. They're like my age now and I don't like it! Because <laughs> you keep having that... They met in the 90s! I'm just like, what? No! You! Yeah, stop! Yeah, sliding, t- sliding time, Lil. Yeah, it, oh remember- my god. Sliding time hits the freaking Simpsons way harder than the, Mar- than the Marvel Universe. Because I, I think their first, they, you know, how Homer and Marge met... They was met in, this, in high school in like the, the 60s in, or 70s Yeah, or I, I thought like it was like the 70s, yeah. So yeah, yeah, because yeah, she was burning her bra, so it might have been the 70s, yeah. So now it's the 90s? Oh god. Yeah, then they had 
one for the 80s and next thing you know it's going to be the 2000s matter of fact they might have even had one for the 2000s i don't know they like yeah that's that's the whole thing it's like i, I get it's a cartoon and a it's like a episodic sitcom but like <sighs> but it's like yeah well, if, some, I mean- something should just like Stay at the core. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but again, but I guess you have to make these decisions. That you know, if you are a cartoon that stays around for thirty five years continuously, it's like, uh, so it's just like South Park. It's like, babes, I'm ready for them to be sixth graders. I don't know who needs to hear this, but South Park sixth grade year final season. Just do it, Matt and Trey. For the love of God, I know you want to. Just do it, South Park. All grown up. Just do it. Or you know what they did? They did that. Uh, you know, during COVID and stuff, they did those that uh, episode where we saw them in the future when they're growing up. Like, you know, let's do, let's. Yeah, Carmen deserves to be home. <laughs> or, <laughs> or it's like you know, just do different eras. You know, let's get a special when they're in high school and stuff. Yeah, can something. you imagine? Oh God! Like everything. Like I just, I think I'm just aged out of all my special interests, and I need to find new ones. <laughs> Like the Simpsons, South Park, it's all just like ugh, every time I try, like I try so hard, but like I'm aged not a South Park rabbit. But again, it's like a lot of stuff. Does it have a shelf? Like again, Simpsons thirty five, uh, South Park, what at twenty twenty six? Yeah, I mean, even Bob's Burgers, like what on its like twelfth year or something like that. I can't believe that. I mean, I can't watch that, but I still can't believe that. No, watch Bob's Burger movie, please, 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 just do that. And and I'm telling you, like I don't watch the show that often, but like it. Once I watched the movie first, it made it like a lot easier to like like when you're bored and like you're waiting in between uh, to watch Family Guy. Like the, the you know it's that joke. It's like uh, you stay at eight o'clock and I'll stay at nine o'clock with nothing but garbage in between the garbage being Bob's Burgers that comes from like that Family Guy <laughs> Simpsons crossover. Yes, it's Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Oh, did you see that? I guess uh, for the oh season fourteen. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> there my. you go. But did you see? Um, is the writing on the wall? Because did you see? I guess for the new season, they're moving Family Guy to Wednesdays. Yes, finally. So does finally! that? So, so does that mean the end is nigh? <laughs> so, well, when when Family Guy is not animation domination Sundays. Mm-hmm. That's all, that's all it much. might be time. I know, because I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, don't they, don't they have a, a night for all the animated stuff? It's time. It's finally happening. I'm so excited. No, I shouldn't say I'm being excited for people to lose their jobs, but it's time. Family Guy has been trash for so long. It's so weird because it's like, yeah, they moved that, but it's like, okay, Simpsons has been on Sunday nights for 35 years. Well, not 35 years. They they were on a different night a couple of times. They, oh, were they? they did, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I remember, remember them being on like Wednesday nights and... They haven't always been on Sundays. Oh, I think the majority of their... Yeah, the majority of their run, for sure. Like, when they figured it out, they're like, this is the staple for Sunday. Mm. It was like The Simpsons and then, like, X-Files. That was, like, their Sunday staples. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whenever think... they decided to do that. So, whenever X-Files got moved to Sundays, was, like, the permanent... Yeah. Move. Well, again, 1989, I mean, that was only, like, two years into Fox's existence. So. Yeah. Yeah, once they figured it out, yeah, they, you know, got more shows, they locked that in. Yeah, they, they tried. They really did. They really got lucky with Bob's Burger to have that, that solid run. Mm-hmm. But again, it's not for everybody. But yeah, that that yeah that original Fox, it was this. It was Married with Children. Uh, oh, we are definitely going to talk about it. Oh, yeah. We definitely got to do Married with Children. Yes. Uh, no, that's not the day that I said. No, I said I would crush your soul on a Tuesday, on a Thursday. <laughs> Funny. Sorry. And by soul, I mean someone's balls. Oh, oh my. <laughs> yes, kids. Don't, Lil, don't, Lilith is a dom- do that. Lilith is a dominatrix. You didn't know that. <laughs> consensually, consensually. Yeah, well, yeah. She, you're, you're getting paid for it. Lil thing do nothing for free. <laughs> well, except for this show. Yeah. yeah, cash up in the in the show links, by the way, guys. Yes, kids. Yeah, kids. Or subscribe. subscribe to the Patreon, buy yes. some merch. <laughs> or best of all, do all three. Okay, let's actually do the podcast that we get paid nothing for. No, but it's just like, I love Santa's Little Helper, but I love Snowball, even though Snowball is like up to like Snowball 4 at this point. I was going to say, sure. I was going to say, even the first episode, she's like, oh, we lost Snowball, but we got Snowball 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's like freaking Ultron. Yeah, comics. exactly. Yeah. 
snowball. Yeah, like the Simpsons is a special. It has a special place in my heart. And I, every now and then, I like I try to like, like watch a new episode. And it's it's not bad. It's just not as good. Like I just don't think that no show can keep up the quality. Yeah. Well, oh, again, it's just such a weird thing because it's a, it's a thing where it's like starting with like my generation. It's been around since like everyone at, from me on. It's been on since you've been a kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. I, like I don't even think I started watching The Simpsons. Like actually, like watching The Simpsons, I was like ten or something like that. And I had like all the because like, they were they showed reruns and stuff. So I had, like I got like I don't even think people can do that anymore. Like so I got to see like the whole backlog and then watch new episodes. Like it was like always on somewhere. And they don't even do that anymore. Like in the afternoons after the news or whatever. Like I haven't seen like Simpsons rerun on like actual network TV and. In a decade and a half, probably. I've. S- it, it's I, on like I think they used to do FX, and now it's just strictly like Disney has gate is gatekeeping it. No, I mean it, it's so weird. I I haven't even been watching it, but I'll see on the uh ske- on the schedule like um like my local Fox affiliate, they'll put it on, they'll throw it on at like twelve thirty or one o'clock in the morning. Really, I like, yeah. I haven't seen it in in my markets. So That's what I'm saying. It. It's it's I'm, it's not like a Seinfeld or anything where it's like on 20 times a day on 50 different channels. I I think you, you know if you, if you catch the right channel at the right time, you might catch it. Oh, you know, or is it? Were you saying FX? Is it FX or FX? Yeah, it's FX. Somewhat. I, I, I don't. I couldn't even tell you what the hell is going on with that because of Disney's acquisition of Fox, and then it's like FX on Hulu, and it's just like, wait, is FX still like a cable channel? Why? What, what, what's going on here? I don't. I don't know what's going on with FX and FXX. I thought FXX was not a channel anymore. Or unless that's the stuff that's on the app now, or the yeah. app or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's so weird. Oh, shout out to HBO Max if you want to watch with ads, one ninety nine. You mean, and then you can get the full premium tier without ads, and also the BR Sports package for twenty dollars. Just, just hint, hint. You mean Max? <laughs> yeah. Stupid. And the color, the blue color, is so stupid too. Purple stood out. I don't know what the. <sighs> just breathe. <laughs> breathe <laughs> god it makes me so mad well did they make it blue just because i don't know or a lot because all the like why be blue why be blue when you can be purple hell <laughs> hell <laughs> i'm gonna need that as a job wolf has turned a lot of things from blue to purple consensually consensually yeah oh, yeah can't stress this enough <laughs> Not gonna cancel me. <laughs> Scream at. Yeah. I mean, if you just turn on the news, there's a lot of um, a lot of things going on <laughs> that aren't consensual. No. Oh, so, right, yeah. yeah, it's like ooh. <laughs> so I have to stress this, kids. I've never gotten that. I'm like, how does anyone? Do- Again, you shouldn't be doing Listen, bad things to people. Money literally goes to people's heads. I've seen it happen in real guess, time. But I'm like, even if you're the the aggressor, I'm like, how, how much fun is the, doing something to someone against their oh, babes, will? The psychology of like, I famous people. I guess. It's, it's, fame and money literally do something to your brain cells. I, it it has, needs to be I studied. Cause I'm it like, needs to be studied. <laughs> I'm like, I could derive no joy out of doing something to someone you know, against their will. You know, it's... It's well, that's because you're a normal human being. I guess, yeah. Well, well, wow, no one's ever accused me of that. <laughs> people take it for granted. Most people have human decency, but the people that don't. I know. Their time's <clears> up <throat> looking like, and it's about damn time. And it's just, it's just depressing because that's what leads to news most of the time is the people who, you know, the sick ones. Yeah, yeah sad but it's it's overdue it's like oh you know we've been hiding you for 30 years i guess you didn't pay your illuminati dues so i know there's every- your business out the street because <laughs> everyone's just like oh why did things get so bad i'm like i think everything it's it's, it's, it's always a, been this it's bad. always People been just bad. have the power to speak up now oh yeah just <clears throat> just the 24-hour news cycle social media yeah it's just we have more ways to see it now yeah people actually believe people now yeah mm-hmm. thank you svu no, like, seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you know, Copacanda can be good sometimes. Sorry, Noel. Speaking of another long running show we'll have to get to one day. <laughs> well, if we even tried to rank, I think we'd have to rank the seasons and then we'd have to do a list of our favorite episodes. Like, there's no freaking way you can watch every up. Like, that, again, that's an hour long show. There's no way. Hell, that's another I one. I remember watching the first episode of the Year of Our Lord 1999, okay? Mm. <laughs> I see it wasn't even there. <laughs> Oh, well, that's another one. Just the, just the SVU itself could be a lifelong project just for a law, podcaster. No, the Law and Order franchise. Oh my God, can you imagine? Oh, I just know. You know what? I should find me a. Uh, I should find me a Law and Order Universe podcast. I'm gonna do it right now. Oh, God, <laughs> You're about to fall down. Where Harkin say? Where is the Watch Along podcast? Everybody else has one. You know what was it? Oh God, I forget if it was like 2020 or 2021. They like NBC did like an actual like. Uh, SVU, like official SVU podcast, but it only lasted like the one season. I don't know what happened. Yeah, because they're like, all right, pandemic's over. Podcast are out, kids. Let's go. I guess. <laughs> yeah, because it only lasted one season. But yeah, they, I know my, I listened to it. I remember like they did talk to Mariska at least like once, maybe twice. Like they interviewed like most of the cast at least once. And I'm just like, where Wow, most that- of that cast is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. They talked to Mariska. I and they talked. Didn't, to, I didn't remember talking. Didn't team. that one girl finally leave? The oh, one terrible sister. Oh yeah, yeah, Car- yeah. She got like married to Carisi or something. She did marry. She did marry. She her and Carisi are married. You know what? She'll pop in every once or twice for an appearance. And, and didn't they get her from that other NBC show, like Manhunter or something? Oh, I it was don't just know. So weird. I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> I just I, listen. I've never been like a fan of that new crew. It is like Team Arrow uh, 3.0. I'm just like, babe. It was, shout out to Wild Dog and Greg, man. I love y'all, but. Y'all didn't need to be on Team Arrow. That that's just what it feels like. It's like babes. Y'all look like y'all belong on a whole nother show. Well, the last couple seasons, it's like you know they'll bring in new people and they'll last like a season or two. Then they're out because I saw that. Like, you know, look at you, Adam Beach. Like babes, you were never gonna be a fit. You were never gonna be a fit. I'm sorry. Just keep that shit over there, in Queens. <laughs> keep it over there, in Queens. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw there's going to be a new cast member in the upcoming season, and I'm just like, man, they're burning through uh, people fast here. All of a sudden, it's like, babes, I just need, I just need Elliot's team to be folded in. Like, bring it on home, baby. Oh, You're so close. yeah. You're so close, please, <laughs> please. He's divorced from his wife and everything. Please. Well, she's dead. She's dead now. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Now, no. What about the daughter? The crazy daughter. That's the only one we got to worry about. <laughs> you, I mean, you really don't see much of her because she's grown now with her own family. So it's like, yeah, I mean, it, that's how they brought him back. I said, let's fold it back in and give the fans what we want. Yeah, when they brought Stabler back, that was one of the first things they did is they killed off that wife. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. How bad is this? Oh, baby, we're getting ooh about that. Because <laughs> they're re- they've really been playing ever since he's been back. Will they? Won't they? Because you know now the wife's dead, so there ain't nothing standing. You know, mostly his kids are grown, so it's like, oh, hey, you know, all twelve of them. <laughs> well, <laughs> plop until you drop Catholicism. I was gonna say he's a Catholic man. He didn't believe in that. They don't believe. They didn't believe in that birth control. <laughs> Barb. Anyway, <laughs> no, but that, that's the other thing. It's like they showed like the birth of that youngest kid, and then meanwhile, I think he's like in college now or something. <laughs> oh God, I no. know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, these these characters age in real time. <laughs> well, they have to. <laughs> I mean, not all shows. I'm like Angel, babes. You look like you were like literally from the end of Buffy finale where he got his own show to like the beginning of his show. Looks like he aged five years. <laughs> Wait, aren't you supposed to be a mortal vampire, babes? I know you have a soul. Oh, you, <laughs> they never really specifically said we're you, just supposed to go along with it. You knew, I mean, as much as we love the series Angel, I mean, you knew there was a shelf life on that series. Well, yeah, it's Joss Whedon, but... Well, well that and plus <laughs> vampires. I mean, people do age. <laughs> but yeah, oh my God. Shout out to Charisma Carpenter. <laughs> oh, yes, shout, shout out to her. <laughs> oh, justice for Charisma Carpenter. <laughs> Man, she's still looking good. Yeah. Because she's unproblematic. Yes. <laughs> That's what happens when you stay unproblematic. <laughs> but no, I was going to say, we should take like a month maybe and like each week do like, okay, our 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 favorite season, you know, rank the seasons and do our favorite episodes of like regular Law & Order. SVU. That means I'm going to have to catch up of like five seasons. <laughs> Let me get caught up. 
Like okay, you don't do that this summer. I'll I... get caught up and we could do it. Okay. I was going to say, I'm like, yeah, like you never binge anything. That's a lot though. Like they, yeah. then now talk about a show that does 22, 22, 24 episodes a season. Like that is old school procedural episodic. Well, that's like even re- even regular Law and Order. They did twenty seasons, took a break for like what ten years, and then they came back and they're doing new. <laughs> they're like, and eh, nothing else is on. <laughs> Wait, it looks like we got the whole Chicago PD. We can do a crossover with now. Well, well, again, I think it was the age of COVID too. They brought that back, and so, you know, and it's like they were bringing in the Stabler shows. They're like, oh hey, you know, uh, connected universe and stuff. I still need my trial show. I want I want more of the district attorney. Like, listen. I'm just saying, I know it was meant for dear, dear and near to my heart, Jay Orbach, and he is gone. But Phoebe, Phoebe Newworth is still around. I'm just saying. I know she has that Frasier thing, but there's only like eight episodes a season. We can work around it. And I've just stumbled into this and got, gone down the hole lately, but it's like, we need D'Onofrio back. <laughs> oh, welcome to the Criminal Intent Club. <laughs> So that show was so good. It yes. was so good. I'm watching Shout out to now, Courtney yeah. Vance, aka Mr. Angela Bassett, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, those first couple seasons, man. The captain is uh Daddy Queen, yeah. Yeah. Jamie Sheridan, Sheridan yeah. yeah. So good. It was so underrated. Oh yeah. Just, oh my god, Denofrio. Oh my lord. <gasps> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And like the thing about that is that I love that partnership, but you never shipped them. Yes. Yes. So it didn't distract, like like Stabler. <laughs> they were just, they they were just colleagues who respected each other. Yeah, oh. yeah, which is so far and few between, so far and few. Especially even when it's like same sex, people are still shipping them together and just like yeah. get out of here. Especially for get t- out of my fandom. Yeah, TV drama. Yeah, no, no, because it wasn't criminal intent. Like the focus was more on like the criminals too. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was definitely super special, and it and I think like I don't even know. Like, why it didn't catch on as much. Like, it's definitely one of the, like, more underrated SVU mm-hmm. uh, Law & Order franchises. Well, that's the thing. I think they took regular Law & Order off after 20 seasons. They're like, ah, oh, you know, SVU will last a few more years, and then I don't ride <laughs> off into the <laughs> by sunset. By a few, we mean uh, forever till the sun burns out. <laughs> <laughs> and by the sun, we mean Mariska Hargit. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Oh yeah, and then they- we'll have her. We'll have her son be freaking <laughs> like it's just gonna be SBU next gen. We'll have uh Finn's like grandkids, <laughs> Carisi and what's her face's kid. I'm telling you, mark my words. You think that show will outlast Mariska? It'll be Degrassi all over again. <laughs> I was gonna say. I mean, I could see regular Law and Order going because they always rotate people out. But I'm like, can you? I mean, SBU. You think it's gonna go on without her? If they did next gen, where they like, we see her son growing up and he gets into criminal justice because we're, t- I'm telling you, the minute we say that kid's interested in going to law school, we're gonna get that SVU next gen. Mark my words. <laughs> it's just gonna be a picture of him in the opening credits, a picture of her behind him in the opening oh, credits. Oh, yeah, yeah there's, gonna, there's gonna be a portrait of her hanging above his desk the whole, the whole time, every episode, yeah. You know, you're nothing like your mom. <laughs> your mom was legendary. <laughs> Oh my god, and one of Stabler's kids in there too. Yeah, it's like, yeah, remember when our parents almost banged? Yeah. We could damn near be siblings. <laughs> we almost were. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I, I, does this don't make it like, like I said, they just don't make these shows like this anymore. Like nothing is built for longevity. It just makes me really sad. No, in the age of, in the age of streaming services where they yank them off after a season. Oh, the only other show, long-running show with a yellow lead character, SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, Aired yeah. in 1999, 10 years after The Simpsons. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just saying. Who still has Another a- show supported by stars with nothing to do. Who still has a float in the Macy's Parade, SpongeBob SquarePants. Bro, I was just waiting for somebody to lose control. <laughs> it's like, Woody Woodpecker, oh no, the humanity. I'm such an old man. I'm like, where's my Spider-Man balloon? <laughs> Seriously, if one thing the Macy's Day Parade should always have is a Spider-Man balloon. I mean, if nothing else, shouldn't the mouse have that in circulation? I'm like, come on. Hey, what are you? Let's, like, listen, they broke up Mickey and Minnie. What the hell does the mouse even know anymore? You know, ninety years they were together. Just broke them up. Just broke them up for no reason. I mean, it happens. Those people were married like sixty years, and they just all of a sudden get a divorce. It's like, what the hell? Like ninety out of the hundred years of the freaking company oh is that their plan they break them up and then at the 100th it's anniversary it's like them, not barbie and ken the 100th okay? the 100th anniversary of disney they get back together well that's 
this year. We're, we're celebrating 100 years. Actually, I think it's the, uh, well, at the end of October, they actually celebrated their 100th anniversary. Oh, really? It was like October 18th or something like that. Well, yeah. I thought they were, I thought they would have trumpeted it out more that they hit 100. Oh, they did. It was everywhere. It was all over. Like, you didn't, have you not been in the, like, Walmarts and the Targets? Like, every product has Disney's 100th year. Oh, uh, okay. You know what? I, I think I might have seen the logo, but I'm just like. Yeah, at yeah. the beginning of the year, they were way more aggressive about it, for sure. I'm, so, I'm just surprised that they would have been more, more aggressive. No, yeah, but, at the beginning of the year, it was obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> it was obnoxious. So yeah. I think they got the hint. And then the Barbie movie kind of promotional stuff took over the stores and TV and stuff, so. But yeah, it's, it's, it's sad what the mouse is doing. But I do like, um, I, I love the, the meme of welcome synergy when they bought Fox and it, like they predicted it, but it's like the mouse was on a rampage to buy everything. So it was gonna, it was only a matter of time. South Park told us kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, Simpsons did it first. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that is so epic that, like, a show like South Park can, like, poke fun at that. Yes. And then I just, I love that The Simpsons sent um South Park flowers after they, like, roasted the Family Guy episode about them, make how they made, like, with the dolphins moving the pool. <laughs> they actually sent them flowers. Oh, my. It's so funny. It's so funny. But, yeah, it's crazy. Simpsons definitely paved the way for all this stuff we love. And it's so mild in comparison to everything. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, supposedly this was the edgy, edgy animated show. But yeah, then flash forward a couple years later and you had South Park and all the other ones. Yeah, well, a decade later. <laughs> well, a little less than a decade. Yeah, but... so, yeah, South Park was, what, 97? Yeah. And then that just all leads us to Rick and Morty. Oh, my God. That just, oh, my God. That makes it, it South Park is older than Sponge. You said, it's, what, it's 99 for SpongeBob? Yeah. So- Spongebob is for kids anyway. But yeah, but I'm saying... Ad- so- like I said, adult stoners watch it. That's who that show's for, and you can't tell me that. I know, but I'm just saying, it seems like Spongebob's been around forever. South Park's been a long around longer than Spongebob. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. South uh, Simpsons was edgy until Beavis and Butthead came along. Ooh, that's a good point, but like, I don't think that Beavis and Butthead is as legendary as The Simpsons, just because it wasn't actually around long enough to be. Well, it didn't have the longevity, but I mean... Yeah. I mean, it's legendary enough they brought it back. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's iconic, but it's not like... It doesn't have staying power. It's just because of the nature of the the top of the topics that they pick and choose. And <laughs> stoners keeping it alive. Fire! Fire! <laughs> and, you know, MTV, that's just a shell of what MTV used to be, you know? Mm-hmm. It's so sad. Everything that I, I, I grew up with is just garbage now. <laughs> Give me back my be- Beavis and Butthead, my music videos, and Jenny McCarthy in a bikini. <laughs> damn it. You can get a McCarthy in a bikini. I won't tell you which one. <laughs> oh, damn. You know where her cousin is, right? Who? Melissa McCarthy. Oh, yeah. I think I did They're hear that. They're actually real cousins. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I thought I did hear that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jenny is too busy being a dork about what causes autism. So. Oh, Lord. Yeah, and then when like she got with Jim Carrey, I was just like, oh. Well, oh. well, again, it's hot. It's hot girl syndrome. It's like you know when they're young and hot, you know, guys, you know, think everything they say is interesting, and then they start aging, and you know, all of a sudden it's like, wait, what are you saying? Wait, what? Not you, Pamela Anderson. We'll always love you. Yes, we're not talking yes, about you. No. <laughs> oh, we need to do a Pam Anderson episode. Oh, <laughs> uh, did you ever watch that movie? No, no, no. I need to. Yeah. What Pam and so, Tommy? You, you, yeah, we we could like I said, nineties. That, that's a nineties. We, we should kind of probably rebrand to the nineties nostalgia nerds <laughs> at this point. Wasn't that the original plan <laughs> of this show? I, yeah, it's like that's all even nineties nostalgia nerds. That, that's what we're here. That, that that's what this is. <laughs> Coming in twenty twenty five. No, kidding, kidding. Hey, well, I don't know if my liver's gonna last that long. I said, well, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> made out of uh, adamantium. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Uh, tell us your favorite Simpsons holiday episode um, or just episode in general and we'll talk about it in New Year. Yeah. Come on, you nerds. Nerds! The ultimate source of memes, The Simpsons. <laughs> My favorite nerds! is him just fading into the bushes. That That's the best Simpsons Oh, meme. yeah. Homer just... Is... <laughs> that's what I always see. When you oversleep for for a podcast, <laughs> yep, that's me. That's me just creeping back into the bushes. 
Who has to pull dogs off of her? She's sleeping under a pile of dogs. <laughs> oh, I, I'm almost tempted. It's so damn cold. Man, if you tell me uh, global warming isn't real, this is just a cycle, I'm going to call you a liar and punch you in the face. <laughs> I know. I know. <sighs> but, like, poor Texas is going to have so much snow this, summer, this, uh, this winter. Their grid can't take it either. Mm. Texans ain't built for the snow. No! <laughs> I know. I know our uh, precipitation rate's been down the last couple years. So, you know, it's nuts. Yeah. So, uh, stay tuned for more socialist rants, uh, well, food reviews. <laughs> well, well, yes, and we did kind of uh, record out of order. So, yes, next week, yeah, on, if you're listening to us on the podcast, yes, you will get your uh, Walking Dead Dead City reviews. So, yeah, that happened. <laughs> yes, and then followed by L. I can't believe they're getting a season two. Uh, and then L. I mean, they kind of left it. Kind of left it on a cliffhanger. I was like, we're not done. And again, it's milking, walking dead. Well, we're again, not done. Well, again, too, it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan and uh, Lauren Cohen. I Cohan, get so. that, but like, yeah. I mean, let, the, let a villain be a villain, man. That's all I'm saying. Oh, maybe that's what we should do next year. Uh, get you to watch the six episodes of Daryl Dixon, and we'll review that. Ooh, yeah, probably not. In France, Daryl in France. Definitely not. No, no, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Wasn't well, there another spinoff supposed to be? Oh, I want to do Rick and Michonne for sure, though. Yeah, that well, that's coming at the end of uh, yeah. February, so yeah. So yeah, we'll do definitely do Rick and Michonne. I, I don't know about Daryl Dixon. Okay, okay. And uh, so yeah, with Walking Dead, Dead City, then our Elf review, and then yes, the last episode of the year will be part two of our holiday uh, party. I, I'm curious to know where you cut <laughs> our conversation off at for part one and part two. Again, it, it, I was like, what's worthy of Salty and Petty? Okay, first part is on Capes and Lunatics, and it ends when Tyler leaves. Oh, oh, <laughs> when the grown-ups leave! <laughs> so Salty and Petty is you, me, and Justin. Nice, nice. Okay. I figured, I figured, hmm, Salty and Petty? Yeah, that worked. That, that tracks. <laughs> All right, so, see kids? <laughs> Teasing you. hey hey So, I mean, the whole thing is good. <laughs> I mean, the, I mean... Either one could have been Salty and Petty. I mean, after Rob Southgate's story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's another teaser for you, kids. If you want an adult Rob Southgate story, <laughs> check out the cave. Off color indeed, sir. Off take, color take out, indeed. Take out the, check out the cave, part one on the Capes and Lunatics at the end of the year. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, send us all your thoughts. That's where you should have cut it off the cliffhangers of that story. <laughs> I know, but that was pretty early in the first. Yeah, uh, yeah. Early, yeah. so I was like, I was like, yeah, the first episode will be like fifteen minutes, and the rest will be on Saudi and Teddy. Uh, but yeah, you should w- listen to both parts, kids. That's almost like two hours of a party. So, all right, so yeah, send us your thoughts on all the Simpsons and all the other stuff. And again, send us your suggestions for twenty twenty four. What do you want to hear us uh, talk about? Review. I'm just waiting for an avalanche of emails from Noel. Socialist rants. Socialist rants. Socialist rants. We definitely got to get our rant topic bowl going here. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Send us suggestions for rants and we'll just throw them in a hat. And, oh, that's what I I think I said that before. I just want to randomly pull out a uh, rant to be like, okay, Lil, this week you're going to rant about with no, you know, with no preparation. Just like, go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The rant bowl. <laughs> the rant bowl. <laughs> uh, that's Lil's brand. All right. So send us. Dear Truly, sponsor us. <laughs> All right, kids. So yes, to send us all your questions and thoughts, email us salty and petty sixty nine at gmail dot com, or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. Ah, uh, we should have got a new number that ended in sixty nine. I know sixty nine zero zero sixty nine. I think I looked when I was setting stuff up, and I couldn't get any number with sixty nine sixty nine or anything. Or I think four twenty sixty nine sixty nine was taken. So. Of course it is. Of course it is. That's your that's your home phone, isn't it? <laughs> Won't tell you what zip code though. <laughs> I was gonna say, kids, kids. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, give it away. But that's her cell phone number. <laughs> oh shit! After the chat, for whoever owns the number. <laughs> you see, Ray, Ray's gonna be down with that number just to make sure it's a joke. He's like, it's not little, is it? Uh. Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> Call 420 69 Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, hello, Weed and Porn Emporium. How can I help you? <laughs> it is <laughs> You need to go into business with Justin. 
All right, so uh, <clears throat> yeah, and yes, find everything capes and lunatics episode, social media, merchandise. Again, it's the cannabis whole- infused biscuits, artisanal. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> uh, my favorite biscuit. Uh, so yeah, buy some merch. Uh, subscribe to the Patreon. Again, you never know what's happening there. Oh man, definitely, definitely listen to no. Was it was it November? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we might be making that the thing for, <laughs> for for Patreon. And again, no, you need to get on that Patreon. I mean, we I mean, I roasted a certain uh, political figure, so yeah, you need you need to get on Patreon, no. <laughs> ah, so yes, kids. So uh, and again, there's a Cash App, Capes and Lunatics. If you just want to send us random money, because you love us, show us you love us. So find every call your dear old grandmother and check on her, would you? <laughs> So find everything at uh, tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. All right. And speaking of, if you want to drop in on your favorite internet granny, where can they do that, Lil? Well, you can friend me on Facebook or, uh, you know, at Lil Hellfire. I, I, I accept friend requests. It's totally cool. I'm not weird like that. Um, but you can also find me on threads and Insta at your favorite internet granny. That's G-R-A-N-N-I-E. Duh. Your mother's a whore! Either do the six or do the nine. Phil can't wait for his Christmas present! Oh my! (laughs) Oh my! What's a Frank Miller? Yeah. Oh! Your mother's a whore! Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, Daniel's gonna think I'll go insane if I open a box and I'm gonna be like, Oh my lord! Your mother's a whore! (laughs) Just put it in a teddy bear! Oh no, the AI. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. this is Frank Miller. And you're listening to the Caves of Lunatics podcast. And your mother's a whore. Your mother's a whore. Oh, it's gonna make me giggle every time. Your whole family can suck it. All right. Uh, yeah. So follow Loaf on Facebook. Get those uh, virtual uh, granny candies from the bottom of her purse. <laughs> Don't go grab the bottom of my purse and stay. <laughs> Never know what you're gonna pull out a gun, a knife, Weapon- Xanax. We- weaponized medicinal marijuana. Those <laughs> right. weren't eye drops. Sorry to tell you, kids. Wow! <laughs> it burned a hole in that concrete floor. Uh, that's right, kids. Next episode: uh, Walking Dead, Dead City. Good stuff are coming. 2024 is gonna be banging.